Okay, so first thing we're going to do is update your new contract. So if you could do that with me by getting your name filled in at the top now and your class period. We're starting off with what we didn't put on our last contract and we're just going to do 25 slash 26 in the same space. And this is going to be for the pink worksheet. When you have that up to date, I want you to turn to page 18 of your spiral. I know on Friday you guys did some Khan Academy videos on prime factorization. So we're going to get our, just a little bit of notes into our spiral on prime factorization. This should be facing the page where we put prime numbers. So this will be on the left side, and today's notes are going on the right side. This actually won't take up too much space. If I was confident it would only take half a page, we'd be putting it on the same page as the other, but I'm not sure about that. Okay, let's start with an objective. I can find the prime factors of numbers. I like to start with the number 100. And I know in your Khan Academy work on Friday, you guys were making factor trees. So we're gonna take two branches off. We always start with two factors. What are some ways that we can factor 100? Or what are two numbers multiplied that make 100? Two and 50. Anybody have another way? 101. I was thinking four times 25. There's lots of ways. Let's do one more. Let's do 100 times 5 and 20. Mm -hmm. And what I want to show you is with all of these ways, they're going to look different as we go, but they're going to end up the same. Because 100 has a set of prime factors that are the same no matter how we start. Okay, right now, the only prime number we have here in this one is 2. Okay, and you can look at your list on the left side of your page and see that 2 is prime. Is 50 prime? So we can factor that down further. Let's say 5 and 10. We can go down further. We have to factor the 10, 2, 2 and 5, or 5 times 2. And as soon as they're prime, I like to underline them to show that I'm finished with that branch of the tree. And at the end, we're going to be saying that 100 equals 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. And there is a shortcut way to write that, which is 2 squared times 5 squared. Sound familiar from Friday's work? So let's go back to 100. What if we did 10 times 10? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get 2 times 5. 2 times 5. Do I end up with the same numbers again? 2 twos and 2 fives. Okay, 4 is a small number, but it's not prime. 
So we can factor it down to two times two, and those are primes, so that branch stops. And what about 25? Yeah, five times five. And again, there's my two twos and my two fives. Okay. The last example we did was five times 20. Five is already prime, but what about 20? It's not prime, it's composite, so we can break it down some more. How do you guys want to break it down? Four and five? Yep, and then we get two twos again. And look at those trees. They're all different, aren't they? This one stops here, but this branch keeps going. This one goes straight across like it's a tree that just got pruned, right? And that works great. We've proven that the prime factors of 100, no matter how we start, no matter what two factors we started with, it always came down to two twos and two fives, right? And this method works great, but I wanna show you guys a different method that I didn't learn until I started teaching math. I learned it the same way you guys did here. And you saw on Friday, Khan Academy, he's also learned it this way, right? But I wanna show you guys what I think is a neater way of doing prime factorization. We're gonna start with the number 252. And this is called a step diagram. These up here are tree diagrams. And we can talk about them with branches. But now I'm going to show you guys how to do this with what are called step diagrams. I like them just because they're a little bit neater. Now, I don't know a whole lot about the number 252 and its factors. That's not a common number we work with. But I do know it's even. And if it's even, that means I can divide it by two, right? So this is kind of like division, but in steps going down. I'm gonna put the two over here, and everything that ends up over here is gonna be our prime factors. And I'm gonna divide 252 in half. And I'm gonna do that with a calculator to make sure I'm not making mistakes. And I get 126. And I'm going to write that underneath it here. And now you guys are going to see why this is called a step diagram. I'm going to draw another one like this. I again don't know a whole lot about 126, but I do know it's even, so I can divide it by 2. And I get 63. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep going until we get down to nothing left to divide out of it. What do you guys know about 63? It can be divided by 3. So let's divide it by 3. And I get 21. Now we're getting into some familiar numbers, aren't we? Because what do we know about 21? We can divide it by 7. And what do we get left? And three can be divided by three and it gives us one. You always know your step diagram is finished when the last thing you divide out ends up at one. And now these are all my prime factors over here. How, how many twos do we have? Two twos and three, two threes. Oops, I put a two though two threes and one seven i just remember when i was a kid in school when i did these things here sometimes i missed one of my numbers if it was this kind of a tree here where they're kind of going on lots of directions oh, yeah. just visually i didn't always see all the prime factors and so maybe i would have only put down these here and missed the five or something I think the step diagram would have helped me because it's just a little bit cleaner and all of the prime factors end up over here on the left side, which is kind of neat, right? And I don't mean neat like cheeseburger when he's like neat, I mean it's neater on the page, right? You can see it better. 
So let's try another number using this method. Let's try something a bit smaller. How about 150? Is 50 prime? How about if we divide it by 5? And this is why it helps having this page next to you here. I could divide this by 50. I could also divide it by 10. But when I look at my list, I'm looking for prime factors, and neither one of those is prime, right? But 5 is prime. And yes, I want you guys to feel free to use calculators to make sure you're doing these correctly. And really in my head, I could have thought 15 divided by 5 is 3, so 150 divided by 5 is going to be 30, but I can also verify that with my calculator. Okay, right, 3 is a prime number that I can divide 30 by. Sure, let's try 5. Gives us 2. 2 can be divided by 2, and that means we're done. You always end with 1. That's how you know you're finished. So what are my prime factors of 150? A 2, a 3, and 5 squared, or 2 5s. Notice when I do this, I'm putting them in order from least to greatest. That's kind of a habit we do. Okay? I want you guys to take your pink paper and try some of these problems using both methods. Do some of them as trees, and do some of them as steps, and see which one you like working with best. If you've already done this, you might do it on a piece of paper that you staple to it, okay? Um, like I said, I think this would have helped me as a kid, but I don't really know. I'm making that decision now as a math teaching adult, right? Do, the one, do both of them and see which one you like best, okay?